What is perfectionism and how does it affect you and your business in a negative way? My name is Tine Kerense from Powerful Business Academy and I help self-employed business women build a business, become a business leader and create the impact that you truly desire and deserve. So let's dive into the topic about perfectionism. Um, let's talk about you. Let's talk about perfectionism. So what is perfectionism? In my understanding, perfectionism is that you want to do everything right. As good as you can. Now, you probably already start to argue in your mind. Maybe not yet, but if you are a perfectionist, and I have these discussions with women who are perfectionists and they say well there's nothing wrong with being perfe perfect uh, and trying to be perfect and that's not what I'm saying <laughs> but the reason why they feel attacked it it already shows to me that because I never come from an attacking uh, mode um, it, it, it shows to me that secretly they also are experiencing the downside of being per always having to be perfect. Having to be the perfect wife, the perfect mother, the perfect friend, the perfect daughter, the perfect businesswoman. Uh, what else? Looking perfect. All of those things. Um, and I think that's impossible. <laughs> it's really impossible but if you have that image if you feel that that is um, what the, the 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 best and ideal situation is you're really doing yourself short so perfectionism is that you will go beyond everything trying to do as much as you can do to make everything right and to be the right person at the right time at the right place always and I think that's an illusion because that's just not always possible we're human and because we have this this uh, image in our mind of how we we want to be and have to be and 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 what is our perfect and ideal situation um, and of course that's not always possible we make ourselves wrong and that's where self-doubt comes from that's another topic we've discussed that last week I think or the week before um, and ju self-judgment oh very you know, we, we cannot live up to our high standards. And whenever we see a friend or a client doing those things, we would always say, you know, but you know, be realistic, be realistic. But when it comes to you or ourselves or me, somehow there's different criteria. Somehow the good advice to a friend we cannot give to ourselves because it's an illusion to be always perfect so it's really important to mellow down to accept that things are the way they are things go the way they go and you knowing that you do your best even if you could have done more it's still enough and what if doing enough is already being perfect because you the standards of being perfect are probably not possible well they I can assure you they they're most likely are not possible so what if doing your best is already enough is already perfect ask yourself that question and contemplate on that what if what starts to happen in your mind? What, what arguments or what voices? Is there a voice who could say, no, 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 enough is, is not enough. Being enough is not enough. 
Or is there some some peace and tranquility coming like <sighs> Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Well I hope it's the last last response. So where does it come from? In my opinion, uh, perfectionism comes from insecurity and trying to hide that. And that's also the imposter syndrome. The hiding that you feel that you're not good enough and therefore you do whatever you can to be perfect, to make sure that nobody knows how you're feeling, how insecure you are. And you know, there's, there's two different people. I think most of us are insecure, but you can act upon it. So you procrastinate, uh, you downsize, play small, or you do what I uh, always have done. I just ignore it and do, uh, and, and do things anyway. It doesn't feel safe, I can tell you. I mean, it, it feels that you can be caught at any moment, which is the uh, imposter syndrome. But at least um, things are moving, business is growing, things are working. And I did feel a lot better about myself, but never good enough. I don't know about you. And I was a successful businesswoman. I am a national champion. I have played in two national teams, skiing and whitewater kayaking. I had a successful business, a business in a few countries. We were, we were operating in a few countries. I had in the summer, I had a team of more than 20 people working for me in five different locations in five different uh, countries. So that really was a business. And if I go to the never enough uh, part of me, I would say, yeah, but you know, everybody can do that. And uh, I, I would look at all the things that didn't go right. And I would say, well, you know, it's, it, it, I just did. Um, but I, that's doing short. It's doing myself short, and if you're doing it, it's doing yourself short. So, yeah, coming from insecurity. And lately, um, I start to acknowledge that I am insecure. And <laughs> people look at me, and they, and they look at me like, you're not insecure, Tineke. I said, no, I hide it because I always talk and, but I'm always afraid I say the wrong thing. And they look at me, friends who have known me for years, and they look at me and, and, and they say, well, have you felt like that with me? And I said, well, it's got nothing to do with you, but yeah, how about you? You know, lately, well, the past couple of years, um, I, uh, I've mellowed down a lot and it made my life a lot easier. I, I, uh, I pat, my uh, pat myself on the back when, it, when things are going right and you should do the same. And you know, enough is enough. And that should be the same for you too. Enough is enough. You do whatever you can, but you can never do everything right. That's just an illusion. And sit with that and accept that. Because you're going to be such a nice, much nicer person if you don't um, lower yourself down in your head, if you don't diminish yourself. It's so much more relaxed. So how do I stop perfectionism from ruining my business? Well, I'm not sure if it's ruining your business. Um, it's probably ruining you. Um, because it's very good for the business uh, because your clients love it the people you work with love it uh, you, you 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 meet your deadlines you you acknowledge your um, uh, your appointments uh, you acknowledge your agreements uh, so and that's that's the case with most women and with every woman I know and that's why um, it's so lovely to do business with women because we always over deliver 
um, we meet deadlines. We 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 would work all night, you know, if if to, to make sure we can meet our deadline. At least if you're having your own business, yeah. Maybe it's a bit different when you work for a boss. Uh, maybe you've been affected with the the mentality in 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 the business where you work, but and and we're we're here talking about our businesses. Um, that's the case for nearly all women. So it's it's not ruining your business. Although, uh, what it does though, perfectionism, it is slowing down your business tremendously. Because what I see with most women is, um, and, I, and I was talking to someone yesterday. She was wor she's working on her book. She's a celebrity in 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 a country in uh, in Europe, and um, I told her that I already started selling my book, my Dutch book, before I even started writing it. And I said, you know what it did? It gave me half a year to finish it. There was just no excuse. I said, okay, if you buy my book now, this is the price. It was half the price. This is what it's about. I had a cover. Eventually the cover changed. It didn't have to be perfect, but I had something and I met my deadline. And I know for a fact, many people who uh, write a book, they postpone and procrastinate and postpone because it's not perfect. It's they're they're scared to coming out with their books. Um, so had I stayed in the being perfect, I could not have sold a book that doesn't, didn't even exist, but that's exactly what you should do because that gives you the enthusiasm that, um, diminishes the doubts that nobody's waiting for my book, or I don't know what people will believe about my book. And it's the same with online programs and trainings, sell it first before you start to create and make it really important how is it ruining you will you become restless um, always in doubt always angry with yourself because you're never good enough um, it's, it's just not a comfortable place to be so what is toxic perfectionism well it becomes toxic <clears throat> when it hinders you, when it does slow down your business, when it does uh, diminish your feeling of joy and feeling of happiness, when you start to build stress, when you start to even go towards burnout. I think one of the big reasons for business women to, to get into burnout is, is exactly this reason, <clears throat> having to be perfect in too many areas in life and of course um, maybe not getting the acknowledgement we we need and want but hey as a businesswoman you hardly ever get that the acknowledgement has to come from yourself has to come from you yes sometimes from clients of course and from business partners but you have to acknowledge yourself first and when you're craving for acknowledgement um, from or within your business um, that's a lonely road and I know because I've been there too bye bye